Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 397 of the No Sure Coding Podcast. I'm so excited that you are here with me today. Welcome from wherever you are in the world. And I just want to express my deepest heartfelt gratitude that you are here and that you are listening. And I hope you're learning. And I hope that this content and these episodes are helping you think differently and lighting a fire under your butt helping you build awareness, helping you know you're not alone, inspiring you, triggering you, whatever it is. I'm just so glad that you are here and whatever you are meant to take away is just absolutely divine. So holy moly, we're almost to episode 400. I can't wait for that. I'll have to do something special for that. Um, But this week I really want to, I want to go back to my low point moment that I went through that really was my life-changing moment that really helped me choose to want to start healing on my journey and and get to this point where I am today, you know, creating this content, tent, serving clients, helping others heal, et cetera. Um, Because I I haven't actually really ever fully broken it down and explained like the process of how that moment impacted me. Um, So I'm going to do that today because there's a lot, there's a lot there. I just made a noise. And I want to go through that with you today because there's a lot. Um, so I'm really excited to have this week's topic be about have you reached your limit with emotional eating yet? And it might not be to be emotional eating, binge eating, binging and purging. It could be with people pleasing. It could be with your hormone imbalances, your gut issues. Like by all means, it might not for you be emotional eating, but I know for a lot of you listening to this podcast, that that is something that's going on for you on a certain level. I'm going to share my low point moment in depth and really break it down for you. And the last point is going to be really taking steps to freedom from sabotage, because if we want to gain freedom, we have to be willing us, each of us individually have to be willing to take steps. And that's going to look different for everybody as far as what you're going to do. Um, But I really want to dive into that today because now we are literally, you know, being, you know, it's the end of January going into February, January's done. We're in the second, you know, month of the year. And this is where a lot of people start to epically fail with their New Year's resolutions. If they set them and you start getting harder on yourself or you're seeing the habits aren't changing. And if they are amazing, but for those of you that they're not changing and you're carrying these things forward from 2022 and you thought maybe it would be different, there's there's something here that hasn't been addressed. So I'm excited to share today and your low point moment. I don't want you to have to have one, period. And I'm going to talk about that, but everyone's aha low point moment is different. So we'll dive into that right away. I have a couple of things I want to talk to you about. So stick with me here. All the details from today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 397. Couple quick announcements. So the first announcement is, as I shared last week, that I am offering a body of freedom savings on my one-on-one coaching programs, my four-month and six-month programs from now until February 28th. So it's $1,000 off four months and $2,000 off of six months, which is like an insane savings. So if you are feeling that you are at your low point with self-sabotage with food, your body, your weight, you know, you're, you're at wit's end trying to figure out why you can't lose weight, why your body's hanging on to protection, why you still don't feel good enough, why you're still using food as a crutch, right? If you're so bloated and in pain and puffy and you're exhausted and you're overbooked and you're overwhelmed and you're overscheduled, whether you're, you know, in your career, you run and own a business, you're a mom, you're, you know, a student, like whatever's going on for you. Like if this is you and you are like, you know what? I'm tired of feeling unworthy. I'm tired of feeling insecure. I'm tired of giving my power away. I'm tired of the physical symptoms. I'm tired of just feeling like this and the impact that it's having on my life. And you're wanting to break free of the bloating, the skin issues, the hormone issues, the cravings, the low energy, the weight gain, the self-sabotage with food. And you want to step into your power and you want to reclaim that and really learn how to build awareness from your ego and take your power back. Then I encourage you to come forth and claim a spot. There's four spots available Once they're taken and or once we hit Feb 28th, the savings will go away. So if you want to claim one of these spots and the savings, you can email me at info at amberapproved.ca with the subject line body freedom savings. You can also book a 30 minute body freedom call at amberapproved.ca. It's super easy. You just fill out the intake form. It's $50 USD fee. And then you get to book your time. And then we can connect for, you know, the half an hour and talk about your struggles, your goals, what's holding you back, why you're stuck and what this approach can look like. And of course, the four people that come in in the 
this time um, will receive that savings. So I'm really excited about that. And I want to help you reclaim your power. This gets to honestly be your year and it gets to be better than ever. So please reach out if that resonates for you. And a friendly reminder, today is the last day if you're listening on Sunday, January 30th, or sorry, Sunday, January 29th. Today's the last day for the VIP offers and there's a few left. So if you wanna learn more about the offers, you can go back and listen to the intro in episode 396 and or go to the show notes at amberproof.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 397. And you'll see that there's some small one-on-one offers available. Um, So if you're wanting to come in and get a taste of support for one session, a two hour VIP session a week or two month, then you can read more at the show notes or you can email me info at with the subject line VIP offer. And I'm happy to share the details and see if we can get you in for something. And for those of you that are new here, of course, welcome. Those of you who've been here with me for a while or since the beginning, I'm so glad you're here. And if you're finding a specific eating style isn't working for you, you're struggling with emotional eating, food addiction, binge eating, digestive issues, inflammation, you suspect your hormones are off, you're discovering you're an empath and you want to step more into your, you know, accessing your intuition and your spiritual self. And you're on this journey with me to all of the things that I'm sharing. Well, guess what? You're in the right place because I'm diving into the habits and mindsets to help set you on a different path. So let's dive right in. So have you reached your limit with emotional eating yet? Now we all reach this so-called limit at a different time. And Some of you may not have reached it yet. Some of you may have already. And for some of you, you know, maybe you are, like I said, you've already reached it or you're building up to reaching it. And when I say emotional eating, it could be emotional eating. It could be binge eating. It could be binging and purging. I'm really meaning like to reach you in whatever aspect you're struggling with with food or maybe it's food fears Um, maybe it's right. The all or nothing cycle between diets and restriction and then overeating and and that, right. So there can be like limits with so many things. It could be self-sabotage with food. It could be with body shame and body hate, um, and how much you are in this self-loathing negative space with your body image and your weight, or maybe it's not weight. Maybe it's like certain parts of your body that you dislike, but I find for most of them when reaching out, there's an insecurity with weight and weight loss. Um, Maybe your limit is with like your overwhelmed nervous system and you're so exhausted and you're so overbooked um, and your immune system is so sucky because you're so exhausted and your immune system suppressed and you likely have high cortisol and you're catching every cold and flu and it's taking you weeks and months to get better. And antibiotics aren't working the way that they used to and then that's making you bloated and inflamed and maybe your skin's breaking out right like that could be your your limit right or maybe your sleep is horrible and you're so exhausted and you're just having anxiety right but for a lot of the women that are reaching out to me there's this accumulation of so many things that cause us to reach our limit right food fear losing control with food losing control with our body needing to have such deep control with the apps, the calorie counting apps, the the points, the diets, the quick fixes, right? Maybe it's now having a negative impact on your relationship with your spouse, your kids, your family, your future love, romantic relationship, your business, your job, right? And for those of you that own businesses that are listening to this, and you know that these things are having a negative impact on your business, and or you're not showing up fully in your business because you're feeling insecure and you don't want to be seen, I highly encourage you to reach out so we can talk about support because not only can we do the body freedom support and healing, we can also look at your business and see where the blocks are. And I can help you build that power and self-worth to help you show up consistently, you know, but, but healing is a big part of this first. The more you heal, the more connected you feel with your body the more likely you're going to be to step outside your comfort zones and and meet your edges in your business, which is going to help you grow, right? But regardless of your background, it doesn't matter what it is. We all have limits that we reach. Maybe you got diagnosed with an illness or a dis-ease or some kind of diagnosis and you're like, wow, that was my limit. Like that was my wake up call, right? Ideally, we don't want to have to get to that point. We want to prevent, we want to heal now so that you don't end up having your body get so overwhelmed and so inundated that it it gets to that point where it's like, okay, now all of a sudden I am, um, you know, in, I'm going to say that again. And yeah, YouTube not getting edited. (laughs) Um, so, you know, maybe for you, like you've 
that's your limit. And we don't want to reach a limit. We want to prevent, we don't want to manifest disease and illness and so much suffering, but you've got to be willing to want to deal with your stuff. And now we're not, it's not like you're, I'm so excited to deal with this. I mean, you might be like, I had a lovely new client come forth last week and she's like, I'm so excited. And I'm like, I'm so excited. I love it when my clients are excited, but I get there's nerves. I get there's fear and worry. I get there's all kinds of emotions that come up when we consider going on a journey like this. So know that that is part of it and it's normal and you're going to have that, but it's like acknowledging it and going, I, even though I feel this way, I'm going to proceed anyway, because the suffering and the, the stuckness and all of the wide array of icky, heavy emotions that I continue to feel because I'm continuing in this is just not worth it anymore. It's, it's not. So essentially we all have a limit. We all have a breaking point. We all have a low point moment. We all have an aha moment. Um, I had another lovely lady join the membership last week and she's like, my aha moment was like, I binged again and realized like there's things I haven't dealt with. And for some of you, and I posted about this on social media last week and I was like, Hey, like if you're the lovely woman who has a lot of nutrition knowledge, maybe you're a coach, maybe you're a therapist and you think you should know better and you should just have all the tools and you should be able to figure all this out. Let me tell you, if you are still struggling with this, celebrate the knowledge you have and know there's other things for you to learn. And just because you have a background of a certain kind doesn't mean you know everything. I don't know everything either. I get help with certain things too, right? And so it's it's to, to, to disconnect from your ego and go, you know what? If I'm struggling, there's pieces I haven't learned about. So am I willing to like detach from my story, of, but I should just know better and I should just be able to and, and go, you know what? but I'm not, and it's still happening. So let me like explore something else because otherwise these things keep you stuck and then they push you more to your limit, your low point. Right. Um, so stop with the, Oh, but I should just know better. Oh, I should just try harder. I need more willpower. These just keep us stuck. Right. So I often find women will have limits with emotional eating. Like they reach a certain weight and they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't stand to gain another pound. So maybe I should reach out and deal with this. Maybe for you, it's your hormones are so out of whack and the emotional eating is having such a negative impact. And that's what inspires you to reach out because you want to get pregnant or your menopause symptoms are horrible and you really want to deal with this to help resolve it, right? Maybe for you, the emotional eating or your digestive digestive system is just in such crummy shape that you're just like, wow, like I'm really seeing the connection between how this self-sabotage with food or stress or overbooking my schedule or mindless eating is impacting my digestion and how my digestive system is impacting my mood, et cetera. And I really want to deal with this, right? But we all have different limits. Maybe, like I said, it's impacting relationships. Maybe you've spent so much money on binging and quick fixes and diets and trainers and multiple clothing sizes and supplements and tests, et cetera, et cetera, that you're like, I've spent so much money. Like I've talked to women who've been like, yeah, I spent like 20 grand on like surgeries and all these things. And I still want to do it. And it's like, well, yeah, because unfortunately, and I mean it with all due respect, because people are going to make the choices they're going to make. But to be honest, like it's just another quick fix. It doesn't fix the unworthiness, the void that you have, right? Quick fixes are not going to help you address the root causes of your unworthiness. They're not going to help you to fill the void and stop using food. That is a mindset journey. That is an emotional journey. That is a physical journey. That's an energetic journey. And for some, then it becomes a spiritual journey as well, because that part opens up. Right. But I know because I spent 50 K on binge foods and quick fixes and a trainer that I couldn't afford and all these things at the time. And I did that in a five-year period. So I get it. Like some of you, or a lot of you may have spent significant amounts of money, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands or more trying to fix this, but you're still struggling. And likely that is because you have not yet, whether you've been not willing or resistant, or you just haven't innocent, you've innocently not known how to address the root causes, which is so innocent and so normal. And I talk to so many people who just don't know we're not, we're not taught this. Where are we taught this? We should be, it would empower humanity and society so much more, but we haven't. Right. And there's reasons for that. So reaching your limit. So some examples of reaching your limit, right? I've, I've shared some, you spent a lot of money. It's really hitting your happiness. It's impacting your relationships. 
it's really significantly impacting your digestion. You're bloated, you're in pain, you're gassy. It's embarrassing. You have to like unbutton your pants by the end of the day. You're exhausted. Your cravings are through the roof. You have brain fog. You're right. Your memory is shot and and your doctor's still telling you that, oh, but it's just because you're getting older. Like that is such BS. Your memory is not getting worse. You're not getting more brain fog. Your energy is not declining because you're aging. Like that is just, that works me up because it's such BS because I've worked with women into their eighties fully heal and they felt better than they ever have. And it had nothing to do with age. It is the imbalances going on in the, in the body, in the mind, misalignments with energy. Like it's this that we need to address, right? Because when I was 23 and I was binge eating all the time, my memory completely pretty much felt like it went away. <laughs> And I was 23, like, and then as, as I healed, it came back. So it just, it's examples, right? So don't let people tell you, oh, it's age. You're going to have to just accept this and like suffer. Do not accept that. That is unacceptable. Please do not accept that as a response to me. I'm, I'd be going to work with someone different if that's, if that's the kind of limiting stuff that I was being told. Right. But we all have our limits and I want to share my limit and my low point and what really was the catalyst for me to muster up my courage and make the change on my journey with food and my body, because this moment really took me to a very low place, but it was also, it it pushed me, it, it lit a fire under my butt. And I don't want this to have to happen to you, or maybe it already has, and you're still in toleration. So it's like, well, what is it going to take for you to make change? And I'm going to go through some questions and things you can journal on at the end to help maybe gain some clarity for yourself. But essentially, you know, I I started binge eating uncontrollably when I was about 21 years old. Um, And I had lost weight really fast, right? Long story short, I went through a breakup, lost weight really fast, got that quote unquote perfect body, worked out two hours a day, exercise, right? Restricted my calories. um, And then the body, the weight loss didn't fix anything. I felt very arrogant, very critical, And then I went to a barbecue and ate ice cream cake and chocolate and hid in the bathroom and ate the chocolate for the s'mores and had my first memorable binge. And then it just turned into this whole snowball of like eating as much as I could until I felt sick, six months of binging and purging, stop the purge part. And then like trying to use food to control yet being completely out of control with food in my body and gain 70 pounds really fast. And I did not know that I was binge eating or had a food addiction or had an issue with food you know, in those first seven or eight months of doing this, I just was like, something is wrong. I just want to eat. I don't want to be present. I didn't know I was numbing out or checking out or using food as a coping mechanism. I didn't know any of that. But essentially, I would eat until I was so full, I was sick, right? To me, it was a full loss of control. For some of you, that may not be the case. It may not be that have been that severe. For some of you may have been that severe or worse, Right. So wherever you are on the emotional eating, binge eating, binge purge spectrum, I just have so much love and compassion for you. Have compassion for yourself. There's nothing wrong with you. This is a complex pattern and behavior, and it does take time and awareness to shift it. And you can totally get there. So for me, you know, the low point moment that I, well, I kept tolerating like, oh yeah, it's not that bad. I started to learn about emotional eating a little bit. I'm like, I think this is what I'm doing. In fact, I think I'm binge eating, which is where like you start eating and then you completely lose control. Cause at the time I worked a retail job at Lululemon. Um, and if they brought snacks in, I would have like some cheese and crackers and some hummus and like vegetables. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, well, I already messed up, right? My all or nothing wake could I'd be like, F it, like I've messed up today. So on the way home, I'm going to get ice cream. I'm getting cookies. Like today is a day where I don't care because I already had some cheese and crackers and that messed up my day. So that rigidity and that perfection that I messed up my diet would totally trigger me to then want to grab food and, and binge after I got home. Plus I did not love my job. Like it just, I wasn't meant to be in retail, right? Like I just didn't know my calling, my purpose yet. And that's also, I was eating and I, I didn't get along with my manager and like, I just, yeah. And so she'd trigger me and I didn't yet really know how to like manage my emotions and like take my power back or any of this, right? It was still so foreign to me. So I would like have a bad day and like blame it on her. And then I'd go eat and hurt myself. I just didn't know that that's what I was doing at the time. It's so innocent. And I was chasing that dopamine hit. We don't realize that this is what we're doing anyways. So you know, for me, what kept me tolerating being in the self-sabotage was the food tasted so good. I felt good temporarily for a short period of time. Um, I always knew that I could 
you know, if I was feeling upset or feeling rebellious, like I had control, like I could control going to the store. I could control picking the kind of food I was going to get. I could control coming home and deciding how much I wanted to eat. I could write. And like, That to me, I felt like so in control, even though I was completely out of control because I was losing control with how much I was eating. And then my body would get so upset. I was losing control with my emotions. I didn't know how to manage my emotions or love myself. And so I was just completely out of control. And of course, as I talk about what's below that is insecurity, unworthiness, not feeling good enough, anger, fear, worry, like that all stems back to this, this loss of power, this insecurity. And it's okay. If you're here, we all have to start somewhere. And so I just vividly remember like reading about binging and purging. I'm like, I'm going to cause myself serious heart issues if I don't stop the purging because it's such a violent, destructive, intensive act on the body. It's so invasive. And so with that, you know, I started to go like, if I binge, like I've got to own that I binged and I'm, even if it's so uncomfortable, like I can't purge because it's even harder on my body and binging and emotional eating are already an act of self-hate and loathing and and to further hate myself through that I just can't do that anymore and so I started to own and take responsibility and go I binged I'm not purging I've, I've got to really look at what happened and I've got to own what I did and I've got to I've got to own the bloating and, and the suffering that I've inflicted on myself and that was a personal choice because I feel like we do need to take ownership or responsibility. And and that's just kind of going, oh, well, I did that, but I'm not going to like look at it or deal with it. Um, So I stopped that, but I was still binge eating like crazy. And I just remember laying on the couch in tears, right after a binge, I was just crying. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make 30. Like I'm, I think just before turning 22, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make 30 if I keep being so hard on my body. And I didn't want to do it. This is the thing you deep down, you do not want to punish yourself with food. You do not want to be in self-sabotage. You don't want to be binging or binging and purging or emotionally eating. You don't want to, but we keep doing it because we're chasing the external, the body image, the weight changes, the diets. Um, Our minds are so heavily programmed. We're taught to chase dopamine hits and we're taught to chase these quick fix dopamine highs. And food is such an easy way to get a hit and take and have a break, get a quick break, numb out right? Check out and distract yourself. It gives us pleasure temporarily. And it's a very easy way and a very accessible way to do so. So that's one of the reasons why we continue to go back to it because it's, we're chasing a dopamine hit. And when you start using food as a coping mechanism or drinking or shopping or whatever it is, like you start to, your ego convinces you that it's a friend, that it's a good thing and wants you to stay in the habits because the more you suffer, the more your ego thrives. And the deeper we are, the, you know, the more we repeat these patterns, the more intense and strong the patterns are and the harder it feels to stop. So there's many different aspects of of emotional eating or binge eating that keep us stuck in the cycle that we never learn about that we're not aware of. And then you just get hard on yourself because you've convinced yourself it's because you suck and there's something wrong with you and you don't have willpower when it has nothing to do with any of that. To me, emotional eating was and binge eating were formulated by the very companies that you're giving your money to, to get your dopamine hit. Um, Because they know how to make the food perfectly addictive to give you the perfect dopamine high so that you keep coming back and buying it. They keep adding the addictive ingredients, the cheap, crappy lab made ingredients that poison us and make us sick. And some people may say, well, poison, that's harsh. And it's like, well, it's exactly what it's doing. Um, it's poisoning us. It's, it's dumbing us down. It's calcifying our pineal glands. It's disconnecting us from our intuition. It's impacting your mood and your mental health. It's impacting your gut health and your hormones and your fertility. It's impacting your blood sugar and your, your blood pressure and all of these things. So to me, if we're ingesting things that are directly causing us to become unwell, it's not meant for us to be ingested, but the food products of design so that we become addicted to them. Right. So As I'm laying on the couch, I'm crying, I'm in pain, I just finished a binge and I felt so full that I literally felt like my whole digestive system was just going to explode. It was very painful and very uncomfortable and I got myself into this circumstance four or five days a week, four or five nights a week and I thought I've really got to figure this out but what the hesitancy of what always held me back was I don't know who I'm going to be without food what my identity will be without food because I had literally like disconnected from my social circle, all my hobbies and everything. And like just started revolving my whole life around food and obsessing about food, whether it was restriction or over consuming. So a big hesitancy and fear of not trying to figure it out was 
who will I be without food? What will my identity be? Food feels like a friend. Um, there was a very big intimidation of like, I have so much I need to deal with. I don't even know where to start. So that was another big piece of me feeling hesitant to make change and to keep tolerating being in the cycle and tolerate the massive level of suffering that I was in. Another piece was this was a very familiar comfort zone for me to just continue to use food as a coping me- mechanism and numb out and check out and get my, you know, quick fix dopamine high and watch movies in which I was the character in the movie, which it's movies are such a false reality and it's like they're acting. It's not real. Right. So when, but I wanted to just check out and numb out. It was comfortable. It was familiar. Yes. There was a lot of suffering, but the familiarity felt safer than stepping outside of my comfort zone and getting uncomfortable. And that's why a lot of us will not make change because it feels uncomfortable and we don't like feeling uncomfortable and we don't like change. But the problem with that is it causes way too much suffering and it significantly impacts your quality of life to sit in a comfort zone of suffering and tolerate it and to continue to let your ego convince you that it's really not a big deal because it's a big deal when you are eating and you are hurting yourself with food. And that's exactly what it is. Emotional eating and binge eating is self-hate. You do not love yourself if you are hurting yourself with food, if you are punishing yourself with food or diets or restriction or exercise. That is not self-love. So maybe there's this part of you that's like, yeah, I love myself, but then I'm shoving all my emotions down with food. Well, maybe there's aspects, but you, I mean it with love, but you don't love yourself if you're in this behavior. There is a deep level of self-loathing to deal with but you can totally reconnect with yourself. If you love yourself truly and you really have embodied respect, you will not hurt yourself with food or in any aspect for that matter. So self-sabotage does not occur when we fill the void and we really learn to love ourselves. We'll indulge, we'll enjoy indulgence, but it comes from a place of mindfulness and intention and not, I need to shove down, I need to check out, I'm afraid to feel, right? So another reason why I, you know, was afraid to change and hesitant to change was I was like, what if I fail? I don't want to fail. Um, you know, what if I'm just end up like this forever and I let myself down and nothing works and like, this is it. Right. So I find a lot of women who reach out to me, I ask what's holding you back. And they say, well, I'm afraid to fail. What if this doesn't work? Right. And I say, well, you haven't ever tried this approach. Like you don't know until you try and quick fixes and diets and meal plans and exercise, like they are not going to fix this. Like that's the blunt, honest truth. And this is the no sugar coating podcast. And I'm not, yeah, I never sugarcoat it. They will not heal your relationship with food. They're not going to help you build your worth. And they're not going to help you take your power back on this level of emotional healing. Right. I'm all for mindful movement. I'm all for good nourishment, but any level of food rules, restriction, control, et cetera, is not going to do the trick. It actually just takes you further away from the healing. I also had a discomfort and familiarity zone of using diets and exercise to try and control my weight. And I didn't want to let go of that comfort zone either, that comfort of control, right? And it felt overwhelming because I'm like, I feel like I have so much weight to lose. And I still at the time was focused on weight loss, right? 14, 13 years ago. Um, And so there was all these hesitancies, these fears, right? So to just kind of recap for me, it was like, I didn't know who I'd be without food. My identity, it just felt like there'd be this huge black hole. It was intimidating to think about where to start because I had no idea about any of this 14 years ago. I was in a comfort zone of familiarity of using diets and food to numb out, control, restrict, right? Try and control my weight. Um, I didn't want to get uncomfortable. I didn't want to feel my emotions. I didn't want to go there. Right. So I was holding myself back. Nothing else was. And that's what I find for a lot of people. You're in your own way. You're holding yourself back. But then when it comes time to consider making change, you make up every reason, story, and excuse why you can't, why it's not the right time, why you don't believe in yourself. And then you stay stuck and nothing changes. And I'm here to tell you that if you continue to do that, nothing is going to change. So I'm hoping that this will inspire you today and light the fire under your butt and that you you can prevent having the low point moment and prevent so much more suffering that need, doesn't need to happen. So in this moment, I finish the binge. Some of the food is digest, digesting in my stomach. I always threw the food in the garbage because I knew if I throw it in the garbage, it's going to turn me off because I will not stoop to the level of eating out of my garbage can. So an hour later, I thought, well, if this is the last time I'm going to do this because that's the mentality that ego goes into, Last time you're going to do this, so get it all in. This is the thing. When you actually start healing your relationship with food, 
right? Like I've said before, like I cut out refined sugar, gluten and dairy, but I personally did it because I was so addicted to those three things. But if I tried to have small amounts in the beginning of my healing, I would lose control again. So I made the personal decision. I don't make all my clients do that. If a client has a pretty severe food addiction, we'll discuss it. And it's on their like confirmation that they want to do it. And if we do do it, we swap anything, we swap it for alternatives. So they're actually not missing anything, but it's that those ingredients give bigger dopamine hits and highs, and that can make it harder to start, you know, building balance with food and overcoming emotional eating versus some of the more natural options don't hit the dopamine levels in the same way. And it's easier to actually gain traction. So I'd say like 10 or 15% of my clients choose to want to do that as we're working together and the rest we don't have to so rest assured because i've had a few of you email me throughout the years and be like what if i don't cut?" i'm like i'm not going to make you cut anything out however we want to talk about if it's actually like really addicting and hard for you and a swap would actually make it easier and or when we get to the point where we're balancing your gut flora or working on your hormones if a food's like really negatively impacting something like are you open to minimizing your intake and just subbing it for something better so that you can heal on a deeper level? And for some of you, some of these foods may not impact you. It also really depends on the specific person. And that's why I never like share specific protocols here because it it's always different for each person on what the path is going to look like. So just rest assured. But anyways, so in that moment, I was like, well, whatever, that I have a bit of room left. And this is the moment where I like, I was tolerating suffering, the fear of changing, the fear of healing, the fear of going on this healing journey, the fear of facing everything was so much bigger than the suffering. I was tolerating the suffering and the fear was blocking me from wanting to change. The comfort zone, the familiarity was blocking me from wanting to change, even though there was so much suffering. And the moment that changed it all for me was I decided to go, I dug through the garbage, I pulled out the cookies, I ate one of them, and then I sat on the floor and I started to cry and this immense wave of grief and guilt and shame and embarrassment and hopelessness just swept over me. And if you've done this, I'm sending you in a lot of love. It's okay. I see you. I hear you. You're not alone and you get to change this. But I was just bawling and I'm sitting on my apartment floor. I'm broke. I hate my job. I'm alone. I'm in my mid 20s and I'm literally hanging out at home watching movies, binge eating, numbing myself out of my reality. I'm bloated. I'm in pain. I've gained 70 pounds. I am so disconnected from myself and life and hating life and just going, oh my God, why is this happening to me? I just edited of a garbage can. How did I get to this point? How is this my life? I never thought I'd be here. Why is this happening to me? And all of that just flooded through my mind. And I just cried and cried and cried. But I needed that moment to happen. Again, I don't want it to happen for you. And if it has, I hope that you're like using it as a motivator fuel to actually get help or do your healing. But I needed that moment to happen because what that moment did for me is It crushed this invisible wall of fear that was keeping me stuck from addressing the root causes of why I was stuck in this. In that moment, the suffering became so much bigger than the fear of trying to change it. This was no longer a comfort zone or a familiarity to stay in these patterns. I could not afford in any aspect of myself, physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, spiritually, just life, financial to stay this way. Because I knew if I did, my life would be cut short and I wasn't willing to gamble with that, right? So in that moment, to recap, I crushed the fear. The suffering got so big in that moment from that experience that it crushed my fear of the unknown. Who would I be without food? The journey is intimidating. I don't know where to start, I'm, but I'm in this cozy little comfort zone and it's not that bad. And it's like, no, it was bad and I was suffering a lot and we sh- we need to not tolerate suffering society has created this toleration for suffering and these comfort zones where you numb out with your tv you numb out with your phone you binge watch tv you binge eat the food you check out but yet you don't have time to do self-care you don't have time to eat nourishing food and make nourishing food you don't have time to take care of yourself but you've got hours to binge out with tv and technology and food we've got time your health is worth it your life is worth it your well-being is worth it 
among then your family and your friends and your colleagues and everything else being worth doing this deeper work. I know it's scary. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it doesn't feel fun to admit and have to face, but continuing to suffer and then manifest illness or dis-ease or have it cost you relationships and tens of thousands more dollars or thousands more dollars and your happiness and your quality of life and the time you have on this planet is significant. To me, it honestly does not get more significant than this. Because, you know, when I, I'm in my client sessions, I ask them like, what is one of the biggest costs of you staying in this behavior? And they say time, the time that I have spent and wasted that I cannot get back the time I've spent suffering, the time I've spent struggling with this, the time where I am upset about my weight and feeling insecure. And then it robs me of enjoying a present moment with my child and making memories with them. A moment where I've been intimate with my partner and I didn't enjoy it because I'm too insecure of my body and what he is thinking. That is significant. You cannot get the time back. You cannot get the time back. And when you are 90 or 100 on your deathbed and you are looking back, I know you do not want to regret not dealing with this and tolerating this for the rest of your life. You, you deserve to heal. You deserve to end the suffering. You deserve to take your power back. But it's, it's going to take you choosing that enough is enough. I can light fires. I can encourage you. I can help you open your eyes to what's possible on the other side and why you're stuck. But I can't come over to your house at the end of the day and be like, I'm going to make you do this. Like, I can't do that. It's up to you. And it's as it should be. Right. But that moment changed everything for me because I'm like, I don't know what the journey is going to look like. I just know I got to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. I don't care how long it takes. I can't and I'm not willing to stay in this. I can't afford to in any level of my being or my bank account or me stay in this anymore. And in that moment, I found my courage. I found my bravery. And it literally felt like I was standing on the edge of the Amazon jungle with a butter knife, getting ready to just like find my way through. And I did. And here we are 14 years later, 10 years in business, helping over 15, 16, maybe even 1,700 women now heal this in the most incredible relationship of my dreams with a man that I just adore so much, in healthy relationships with my family, right? And friends, feeling in power, healthy body, peace of mind, connection to intuition, so much more like I could spend a whole podcast sharing about the benefits of how this moment and choosing to find my courage and have some blind faith and, and go forward in faith have benefited me because it's significant. I would not be here today recording this podcast if that moment didn't occur and I didn't choose to go. I'm done. I'm done tolerating the suffering. There's got to be something better here. And that's what I want for you. I don't want you to have a low point moment to begin with, but if you've had one and you're having them and you're still tolerating, like what's in the way, what's in the way? Because sometimes we struggle to proceed because we don't understand the depth of our struggle, right? We don't understand the blocks. We don't understand what's triggering us. We don't understand there's this ego and this all or nothing mentality. We don't understand like how our physical symptoms can be feeling and triggering emotional eating and binging. We don't understand how emotional eating and binging are triggering our physical symptoms. We don't understand how to build our worth. We don't understand how to forgive ourselves. We don't understand what awareness is. We don't understand what the ego is. We, we don't understand. We're not taught. So part of it is we're lacking knowledge and we're lacking deep understanding. And, and there's this overwhelm of information on the internet. 90% of it isn't really accurate because people think they can read a book and write a blog and then they're an expert or people are paid to preach certain things and behind the scenes, they can't practice them themselves. And there's a lot of inauthenticity out there, right? Or there's trends or there's influencers and celebrities endorsing products. And it's like red flag, just try and stay away from that as you, if you can, right? This is deep. And there's, it's not cut and dry. It's not as easy as counting calories and being rigid. This is significant. It's 
It's layers and it takes time to explore these layers, right? It takes time to feel safe and not use food as a coping numbing mechanism anymore. It takes time to work through like the procrastination, the resistance, the avoidance that can come up around us addressing this and wanting to heal it and face ourselves and face our stuff. We're convinced to fear feeling and, and to avoid feeling and that you're weak if you feel and you're vulnerable and you're weak if you feel your feelings and that it's uncomfortable and inconvenient to feel and process. So just numb out with TV and food, numb out of your reality. And that's not healthy. It should have never been like that. We're supposed to be present. Human beings are such miraculous, intelligent beings, and we've been so suppressed. We're taught to fear the unknown. We're, we're taught to not believe in ourselves. When that should be the first thing we're taught is how to believe in ourselves. So, you know, part of this taking steps to freedom from sabotage is really around recognizing, am I feeling resistant to going on the journey? If so, why? Am I procrastinating going on the journey? If so, why? Am I avoiding going on the journey? If so, why? Do I feel blocked from going, going on the journey? If so, why? Do I have fears coming up? If so, what are they? And can I acknowledge my fears, but go like, if I, if I don't break through this, nothing changes. And then I stay like this and I suffer and I'm not willing to tolerate that. Right. It's so important that we look at this, that it's, that you're safe. It's safe to work through your sabotage. And maybe for you now you're starting to realize, wow, like I really want to do this. And what I'm starting to realize is I've tried all these things on my own and they're not working. And maybe it's time to reach out for support. Right. If you want to have a conversation with me, if it's resonating to reach out and get guidance from me, great. If there's someone else, do so. I just want you to take the steps on your healing journey so you can get where you want to go, right? This is a great journal prompt for you. So make sure you're writing these down and you can pause it or come back to this after, right? Or, or do your journaling after. But I really want you to stop and I want you to ask yourself, like, what is it costing you to keep tolerating the sabotage? to continue to overbook your schedule and people please and strive for perfection and keep using the diets and the quick fixes rather than actually face the self-sabotage with food? What is it costing you to not deal with your unworthiness and your insecurity? What is it costing you to continue to quick fix? How much money is it costing you? Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, right? That you could be putting into support. What is it costing you with your relationships? Maybe it's preventing you from finding the love of your life. Maybe it's causing tension between you and your spouse. Maybe your bad habits are rubbing off onto your kids, which is significant because you're passing down these unhealthy behaviors through the lineage and you don't want to, right? What is it costing you in your career, in your business? Not speaking up, not showing up, not being seen and you're holding back and it's costing you raises and growth in business right? Maybe you're not starting your business and you know you have a lot to give the world, but you're not because you're afraid to be seen. Maybe you're insecure in your body and you don't think people will take you seriously. Maybe you're working 15 hours a day to appease everyone because you're so afraid of losing everything if you have balance. Significant cost. What is it costing you physically? More bloating, more pain, more inflammation, more digestive issues, more blood sugar issues, manifesting disease, manifesting illness more hormone imbalances, more fertility issues, more menopause, more, more, more of what you don't want, right? What is it costing you emotionally? More anger, grief, guilt, shame, embarrassment, sadness, self-loathing, lack of faith and belief in yourself, hopelessness. It's costing you your happiness. That's significant. It's costing you time. It's costing you living a miraculous life that you love, that you deserve to have. It's costing you claiming your worthiness and your power. So take some time and write the costs down. And are you willing to continue to tolerate those costs? Or is it like, okay, well, I'm really seeing this enough is enough. It's time to do something about it. It's time to do something about it. And, and I really encourage you to come forth and have a conversation with me. I know some of you have probably filled out the intake form and, and stopped there. Some of you have drafted up an email that's in your draft because I've literally had people message me and say like, I've drafted this email up 20 times and been hesitant to send it. And then they finally do. And they're so happy they do. And they get support, right? Fill out the form, book a body freedom call, email me at info at amberproof.ca. Let's talk about what feels best for you. And if it feels like it's a fit, right? Because this is your path. This is your journey. And that this is a safe space for you to come and do so. 
That's my number one priority. You feel safe. You feel safe coming to open up and be vulnerable and that this journey is taken at a pace that feels good for you, right? And how can we prevent this? How can we prevent this from continuing? Well, we, we do need to address it, 100%. So some other questions to ask yourself, and if you want to close your eyes, if you're not driving or walking right now, and like you want to envision this, right? Like first question I want to ask, two more questions, and then I'm going to wrap up. But these are very valuable and these are life-changing questions. So make sure you take time to journal or reflect or feel into them, however you see fit. How are you being held back in your life with this self-sabotage, the symptoms, the insecurities? etc. Whatever's going on for you in your unique picture. How are you being held back in your life with this? How are you being held back? Happiness, time, less intimacy, you're not with the right person, right? You're manifesting lack, you're spending a lot of money, you're suffering. You're not moving forward, you're not, you know, taking big leaps. You don't feel good enough. Like you can have what you want. You don't feel you deserve success. Like how, how is this holding you back? This held me back from dating. It held me back from, you know, going out and being social. It held me back from getting better jobs. It held me back from, you know, being open and vulnerable with friends. It, it kept me in people pleasing and procrastination and perfection and wasting money on all these quick fixes that didn't work. It cost me years of my life that I won't get back which I'm not in regret of because I get it now, but it's it was significant. It was very significant. And who could you be if you healed? And I'm not, not just talking a little bit. I'm talking like all the way. Who could you be if you fully healed emotional eating, fully healed from binge eating, binging and purging, if it stopped altogether and you felt at ease and peace with food and free with food and that you could eat nourishing food and nourish your body for health and well-being and because it's delicious and you could also mindfully indulge but have balance and not lose control how could you feel if you cleared out all the food rules and the food fears how would you feel if you could truly ditch the diets and the quick fixes and really like claim your power and learn to love yourself and build your self-esteem and your confidence in your worthiness who could you be if as you're healing, your digestion improves and your bloating goes away and your discomfort and your gas and your clothes start to fit normally and the inflammation calms down and your hormones regulate and your mood improves and you're happier more naturally and you feel more comfortable and confident in your body. Who could you be if you healed? How would that positively impact you, number one, and living in your body and then your relationships, your career, your business, your family, your quality of life? Who could you be? Because to me, you get to be in your power and unstoppable and you get to have it all. And I can tell you, it's a lot easier to navigate life and this world right now if you heal this and you're in your power. Because I've never felt so confident in myself and in where this world is heading in my life. And it's not going to be the bad that is being portrayed to so many people. I just trust that. But I would not be there if I wouldn't have done this deeper work. It's significant for every aspect of us as, as a human being. So if you're like, holy moly, this has blown my mind open because I hope that it has. I highly encourage you to reach out and have a conversation about support. This support will change your life forever. It could be the thing that helps you finally heal and address the roots and gain the relief. Create food and body freedom. Take your power back. Reclaim your worthiness. It's already within you, but it's been disconnected. Let's do this. If you want to reach out and you want to inquire about the savings on the one-to-one -one coaching, info at amberfood.ca, body freedom savings, right? In the subject line, or you can book a body freedom call. VIP options are available for Sunday, January 29th. Right. And if you want to just talk about support anyway, send me a, a, a message and we can talk. This is significant. Stop making it small and make it seem like it's not a big deal when it is and be willing to do something about it. Obviously, if it feels resonant to come with me, amazing. If it's someone else or if it's you on your own for a little while, it's whatever you feel called to. But stop letting your ego make all the reasons, stories and excuses why not getting help is the best idea because 
you might just stay stuck and we don't want that. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope it's lit a fire under your butt. The show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash three, nine, seven. You can also go to amberapproved.ca, take the free emotional eating quiz. If you're wondering, if you're struggling, you can learn more about body freedom. You can read more about me. If you're, you know, wanting more details, I'm happy to also answer any questions that you have. You can also book your body freedom consultation or your biz freedom consultation there. A note on that. So people are like, well, what's the difference? Well, biz freedom can include everything body freedom does. And then also I'm happy to help assist you if you're a coach or you've been in business for a couple of years and you're wanting to grow and you feel like you're blocked and you feel like it's your unworthiness to self-sabotage with food, you know, things like this that are really inhibiting you from expanding in your business. There's a lot there to explore. So feel free to reach out on either end. And I'm happy to have a conversation with you and see if it's the divine time to walk this path together to deep healing. So I'm sending you all so much love. I hope you have a beautiful day, a great rest of your week. And I'm cheering you on. And as I always say, there's no better time than the present to take action on your health and your healing and freedom. So take action now. Have a beautiful day, a great week. And I will look forward to sharing a whole new episode with all of you beautiful souls next Sunday.